Maryland Spotlight. It's all about Maryland living. Welcome to Maryland Spotlight. I'm Kim Knight. In my profession, maintaining a healthy voice is vital. And here to talk about that, John Sloan, you are the Director of Fluency Enhancement at the Hearing and Speech Agency. Thanks for being here today. That's correct. My pleasure. Yes. Yeah, so tell me about it. What, what professions strain your voice the most, do you think? Well, I think the, to, to start, the voice is such a, a gift for us because we use it to convey our ideas our emotions and on a day-to-day -day basis most people can listen to us and know how we feel um, in choice of professions we usually make a distinction between the professionally trained voice and that is folks that are in the media uh, or in uh, actors singers who have had some professional training and those people who use their voice as part of their professional occupation to earn their livelihood teachers are among a high-risk group for among professional voice users. Yeah, because they're talking all day long. All day long. If you've been near a classroom recently, you know that teachers are oftentimes talking four to five hours a day without an interruption. They're talking over noise. Um, many times they're talking in classrooms where the boys or girls may come to school um, not feeling so well, colds, allergies, um, without access to hydration. Um, sometimes air conditioning, heating systems that mm, aren't the cleanest. So teachers are really, um, along with uh, doctors, attorneys, telemarketers, um, aerobics instructors, anyone who uses their voice and who's talking over noise. And a sustained amount of time. Or a sustained amount of okay, time. Okay, well, how do you maintain a healthy voice? What's some advice there? There's some really good things that most of us can do, um, and many of us are doing them anyway. One is to stay hydrated. Choice of beverage is important because beverages that are carbonated, caffeinated, or alcoholic can have just the opposite effect of hydration and can dehydrate. Mm -hmm. Exercise and diet is extremely important because in terms of exercise, anything that promotes good aerobic or breath support and upper body strength or posture is really, really facilitative to maintaining a good quality voice. Diet's extremely important too. Um, spicy foods and dairy products oftentimes can either create... I cannot eat a banana or have any yogurt before I go on the air. It just gets all in there. <laughs> and, and then you know from personal experience. So it's a really good idea to kind of keep an eye on, on your diet especially if you know certain foods are problematic. Okay, and let's talk about the difference between men and women. Good. Um, when you listen to a young boy or a young girl speak, sometimes the voices sound very, very similar. As children age, uh, most, boys, most boys will go through that dreaded voice change, um, most unceremoniously, but for the most part, um, that change will take place, and the voice gets, the structural changes take place in the male voice, and it gets deeper. Well, great information, John. Thanks so much, John Sloan. Thanks for being here today. And if anybody wants information, it's hasa.org. Thank you. All right, terrific. Thanks for being here, and I'm going to drink that water. Please do. Okay. <laughs> and thank you all for joining us today on Maryland Spotlight.